I got in Scientology because my parents were in Scientology before I was born. And my mom was on staff when I was born. Did you go to Scientology schools when you, when you were a child? No. no. So you, you were with a lot of ch other children who weren't Scientologists? Yeah. The only thing which I can say is, uh, when it came up that I was a Scientologist, um, it was like that the teachers were aggressive to me and they were like telling the other children, the other, yeah, the other students in the class that I was a criminal person and um, that I should get penalties and um, that I shouldn't be in that school and I should leave the school and um, my parents came and I gave them the book What is Scientology? And um, it didn't take a week and that book came to the director of the school and he was reading the book he was like really studying like Scientology says if you don't understand a word clear it up in a dictionary you know if you have a lack, lack of mass do demonstrations you know if you have um, a too high gra gra gradient yeah gradient you go back to that point where you have understood everything and you have no problems anymore so that's what he did so then I was like uh, he, hi he was hiding me um, when any person was trying to um, to hit me or something like that. So he backed you up? Then. Yeah. yeah. So you grew up studying L. Ron Hubbard's works and, and you thought L. Ron Hubbard was a great He man. was a god. He was like, for me he was my god. If you had a problem, would you turn to? I was turning to um, the books, what he read. And did they help you? Well, for example, the ethics book, I was trying to do the conditions, and I was trying to do the conditions, but it's, nothing was really changing on that point. I was, I was always thinking, well, nothing changed with me. I'm not, a free pe I'm not a free person, but I was doing the conditions. What did you think was wrong with you that you were trying to improve? Well, in the ethics book, it's, um, there is stated if somebody, um, if somebody doesn't want help or if somebody gets help and um, you still have the feeling that he um, that he's not getting helped and there's not, no change and he has no wins and everything he's a suppressive person so at that point I was really thinking I was a suppressive person were you worried about that yeah and now you are a suppressive person <laughs> <laughs> are you worried about that no not anymore okay. All right. they ask me um, do you want to help to clear the word? And I said, yes, I want to help to clear the word. I want, to ha I want that every single person who is criminal to get something, penal some penalty, so um, they don't do the same things again. So um, they told me, well, you're in the right place. You, you have to go to the Sea Org and you do some stuff. You do mass work before and then you do courses, six courses. And I said, okay, well, what kind of mass work do I do? And they said, well, you're going to clean the toilets and... Um, Two days later, I was on the EPF, and um, the first one and a half weeks, I was crying every single day. I was like really crying because I was missing my parents. And um, I spoke to my parents about three times a day. At that point, I didn't go to school. I did about eight and a half, eight or nine months I was doing mess work and doing the EPF. And uh, I had pain like everywhere in my body. I couldn't, I couldn't work anymore, so I didn't do the mess work. I, I didn't continue the mess work. I started working in the um, in the qual office, and um, and then the captain of ASH UK, she was saying, um, Darlene, Darlene, I just know the, Darlene, that's what her name is, and um, she went to the qual qual sack, and told them, listen, she has to go on mess work to do the real EPF, or otherwise she has to go back to Germany. So he was asking me if I want to continue the mass work and I said, no, I'm not going to continue the mass work. I want to go home to my parents. Were you surprised that you had to clean toilets, things like that? Um, I wasn't really surprised to clean, the, I wasn't surprised to clean the toilets. I was e even, I was more surprised what kind of mass work I had to do. Because one kind of mass work I did was, um, um, you know St. Hill, right? A little bit? I, I know of it, I've never been there. Okay. Well. Um, you know, there's Saint Hilma here is St. Helena, where Aaron Hubbard has lived. And there is the castle, and here is, um, here is the hill, and here is the lake. And um, everything which comes from the toilets 
goes through the lake through a pipe and that pipe was broken so me as an APFer I had to take the shit from the toilets out from the lake with a jumpsuit right and with my hands and I couldn't believe that I should do that or like building castles. How many people were doing that with you? Was this, you we were you four people. Four people? Mm. And you did this for how long? For one and a half weeks. And and did anyone protest? Did anyone I protest. I said I'm not gonna do that. And he said, Well if you're not gonna do that, then um, you're not following the you're not following the um, Yeah. Mm hmm how do you say that in English? But you're, you know, you're, you're not following what I say. You right, know, you're how not do you say that? Orders, and orders you're, exactly. Right. You're not following my order, so um, you are out ethics. You have to go to ethics. I said, okay, well, I'm going to follow your order, and I'm going to do that. But no one was concerned that that uh, about possible illness. No. Uh, if you're ill, you're PTS, and you have out ethics. So if you're ill, it's your fault. Yeah. It's not. It's not bacteria. You know, no. The crap it's your that fault. You're, you're carrying around. Exactly. Because you did out ethics. You had. You have OWs. So the only reason why you can go PTS on somebody or something, you have OWs. So you did this for a week and a half. Yeah. And what else did they have you doing? Well, I built the stables. Uh, build them. You you were out there with hammers and nails. And yeah. Exactly. And or I was, um, I was raking, you know, in St. Hill, everything, everywhere is grass. Yes. So we were raking all grass in St. Hill. Or we were sweeping the whole way, which is going through the St. Hill. Which when, is, when did you start in the morning? When did you stop? I start in the morning at 8 o'clock. And I stopped working at about, about, 17, yeah, about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And then I went at 6 o'clock on study. Okay. And you studied till, for how long? Till 10 o'clock. And uh, was this schedule difficult for you? It was difficult because uh, I had the feeling that I'm not getting enough sleep. I was always tired and uh, the food over there was beans and rice. That's all you ate? Uh, not all the time. Sometimes we had salads, sometimes we had potatoes, but the potatoes was, there was too much salt on the potatoes or the salad, they, there was like, there was not enough salt or not enough pepper or, or oil or, or, yeah. Did you have meat? Um, we had sometimes meat, sometimes, sometimes. Okay. but not very often. And, and how many meals a day did you have? Once in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. And uh, and for for breakfast, what would you normally have? Um, mm, sometimes we had toast, cheese toast, mm -hmm. or we had um, eggs, okay. or. Sometimes we didn't have enough time to eat breakfast. And then you're, you're really, so yeah. you go without breakfast and you'd be out there working all day long. But your other two meals in the day were ordinarily what you said before, you know, rice and beans and cabbage. Well, rice and beans came when the, uh, when ASHUK didn't, have, didn't make enough money. Basically, they're doing the money. Right. So, and if they're not doing enough money, the whole crew, the whole St. Hill crew gets shit food. Except CMO and CLO, and the rest get shit's food. So because the org was down stat, you suffered. Exactly. Did it make you want to work harder? Yeah. Did Did you feel it was right that you would be penalized like that? No. I had the feeling, um, you know, if the crew ACH UK is not making enough money, it's not my fault, because they have. They, that, that's their job to make the money. It's not my job to make the money. My job was it to do the mess work, to go and study. Did you did you express that to people? No, if I would have, no, uh, some other person did that, and um, that person went to ethics. So you saw. I saw that, and, uh, yeah. And that silenced you. Exactly. Yeah.